Hello there, I'm Mabel Jong, and you're watching the World Healthcare Congress Interview Zone, and I have here now Dr. Greg Keyes. He's president of Allure Health. Dr. Keyes, great to see you. And you, thanks for having me, Mabel. Well, introduce me to Allure Health, what the company is, and what you've been doing lately. Alir is a leading provider of comprehensive health management services. We serve customers like states, municipalities, health plans, employer groups, provider groups, ACOs, a whole range, and we serve their customers. So we take care of people like employees of employer groups, members of health plans, employees or participants of state plans like Medicaid, dual eligibles, really anybody who needs health care assistance. Mm -hmm. And the kinds of services we provide really are a huge range, all the way from preconception, a woman who is looking to become pregnant, all the way to end of life care with a terminal illness. Okay, so now when you say that you service all of these people, in what way? What sort of work do you do with these populations? Care management services are services to help advocate for people, help identify opportunities for improved help, identify gaps in care, uh, bring people into service or care more quickly, helping them arrange doctors, office visits, coordinating the care. Sometimes, and often in fact, people are seeing more than one doctor, taking lots of medications. There's nobody really to sort that out in the way that there used to be back when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had one doctor and one nurse who kept track of everything. Now we all have lots of doctors. We all have lots of office managers all over the place. And we're getting tests everywhere. Nobody's really holding all that together. Okay. And that's what Alir does. Okay, okay. You've launched a platform called Connected Health. Can you explain to me what that is? I'd love to. Connected Health is really the Alir strategy. Uh, we see the opportunities in healthcare as presenting themselves and requiring three main components. One is somebody's got to actually create information, interesting clinical information that can be used to help someone. And what Alir does is create a number of diagnostic tools at the point of care. So monitoring someone in their home, we can figure out how they're doing on diabetes, how they're doing on heart failure. Now that's interesting, but it doesn't make a difference if you can't share that information broadly. That's what makes it connected. Mm -hmm. So in connected health, that kind of information is shared among all the partners who might want to participate or play a role in that. And then the third is, creating some behavior change. So our coaching, our social media services, our advocacy services all prompt the behavior change that that information, when shared, should generate because it's that change that's going to generate the results. Okay, and that's going to result in someone who is better cared for, better follow-up for that person, and a healthier individual overall. Exactly. You're on a medication that is interacting badly with another medication and you don't know it. By the monitoring that goes on, we might recognize, for example, that you're gaining water weight and you're getting more short of breath and your congestive heart failure is getting out of control. We can share that information broadly with any of the physicians or other members of the care team that are playing a role and then that gives an opportunity for a change. Change the medication take a different medication that will get rid of some of the water, have a doctor's visit. All those kinds of things are ones that we work to move more quickly on. Right now, most of us use the emergency room as the safety net. Right. We don't want to wait that long. Mm -hmm. If you can get the hint that someone's going to have something bad happen, why not intervene right away? And that's what Alir does. Okay, so was this not possible by people just individually before? I mean, you just make it easier with this app with this program? You know, we, we are the BASF of healthcare. We don't, we don't create the health, but we make it better. Uh -huh. We make it easier. Uh, and you're right, if everyone communicated broadly and completely and thoroughly and accurately with one another and shared information and followed all of the evidence-based guidelines, it would work great. But sometimes we need a little help Okay. communicating more clearly, more broadly, and following all the guidelines. And that's part of what Alir does. And how do you feel about um, these exchanges that are going to come online in October? Does Alir Health have a strategy to 
be a big part of that conversation? Well, you know, one of the things that's great about Allure Health is that we're entirely agnostic to who's providing administrative services. We provide the kinds of care management services that are beneficial to anybody. The science is the same, whether you're cared for by your state, by your employer group, on your own through an individual contract, all of that is the same. So Allure is really prepared to continue to serve people in all of their care management needs from preconception all the way to death, mm -hmm. regardless of where they're uh, the administrator of their their uh, health care services. What are the presentation points that you have passed over during the conference this year? You know, I think the, um, I'll tell you, one of the most interesting uh, notions that I've heard is that this is really a complex time. And there used to be a time here at the World Healthcare Congress where it was possible to focus on one or perhaps two things as sort of the real keys to unlocking healthcare opportunities. In fact, Alir has been a major sponsor of yes. this conference for years and years. So it gives us a unique perspective on how it things sure are does. going. And I've enjoyed watching us move from denial, where we were all saying, the healthcare system is very good and, and we don't need to make so much change and we think people are overreacting. That was the denial phase. Then we moved into the anger phase. We were angry at insurance companies. They were the, the bad guys. Then we were angry at the pharmaceutical industry. They were awful. And on and on and on. Then we moved to bargaining. If we just get an electronic medical record, maybe this will all go away. <laughs> and now I see that we finally moved into what I would call acceptance. We're going right. to have to roll up our sleeves, do the hard work, uh -huh. work together, collaborate, because no one is going to solve it all by themselves. There's no silver bullet. There's no single factor that is driving this. It's, it's complicated. So the next stage after the acceptance is? An opportunity to move forward with reality instead of burying our heads in the sand and being angry about it. I look forward to speaking with you on that. Thank Thanks, you. Dr. Keyes. Very much. <laughs> I'm Mabel Jung. Thanks so much for watching.